Ankle injuries are common. It is important to note that the ankle itself is quite a forgiving joint. We will be specifically looking at ankle fractures. But first, let's look at some anatomy of the right ankle. The ankle is a modified hinge joint. It is made up of three bones, the tibia and fibula of the leg and the talus of the foot. The distal tibia and the fibula are bound by multiple strong ligaments and a broad fibrous membrane together known as the distal tibula fibula syndesmosis. This distal union of these bones produces a bracket-shaped socket known as the mortise to which the body of the talus fits. The tibula fibula syndesmosis and the interosseous membrane prevent the mortise from opening. There are two groups of ligaments which are crucial for ankle stability. They originate from the two malleoli, the medial ligaments from the medial malleolus and the lateral ligaments which originate from the lateral malleolus. Simply put, the medial ligaments prevents over eversion and is made up of four ligaments. The lateral ligament generally prevents over inversion and is made up of three ligaments. So now that we've covered the basics, let's look at some ankle fractures. Ankle fractures are fractures that involve the lateral, medial, and posterior malleoli. They can happen in isolation or can be associated with ligamentous or syndesmotic injury. They are classified according to the Danis, Weber, and Langer Hansen classifications, the simplest of which is the Weber classification. All you need to remember here is the syndesmosis. Weber A fractures are below the syndesmosis, B at the level of the syndesmosis, and C are above the syndesmosis. The Langer Hansen classification helps describe the trauma mechanism of the injury. So in a Weber A fracture, there is supination and adduction of the foot. In Weber B, there is supination and eversion of the foot. And finally, in a Weber C fracture, there is pronation and eversion of the foot. We will look at this in a little more detail later on in this video. Each of the Weber A, B, C fractures occur in stages. A has 2, B has 4, and C has 4. So remember Weber A, B, C, 2, 4, 4. Now that we've covered the basics, let's have a look at the specific fractures. In a Weber A fracture, there is supination and adduction of the foot. There are two stages to this fracture. First, there is either tension on the lateral and collateral ligament, causing them to rupture, or there may be an avulsion fracture of the lateral malleolus. Secondly, there can be an oblique fracture of the medial malleolus. Looking at this x-ray, notice that the syndesmosis is intact. There is an evulsion fracture of the lateral medialis below the syndesmosis, and there may be an oblique fracture of the medial malleolus. This is not evident here. In a Weber B fracture, there is supination and eversion of the foot. The force can cause the anterior syndesmosis to rupture. There is an oblique fracture of the fibula, rupture of the posterior syndesmosis, and there can either be an evulsion fracture of the medial malleolus or rupture of the medial ligament. Looking at this x-ray, notice that the syndesmosis may be intact, but it is disrupted here. There is an oblique fracture of the fibula at the level of the syndesmosis, and there may also be an evulsion fracture of the medial malleolus or medial ligamentous injury. Finally, let's have a look at Weber C fractures. There is pronation and eversion of the foot, which causes the ligamentous rupture or evulsion fracture of the medial malleolus. The anterior syndesmosis ruptures, there is a fibula fracture above the syndesmosis, and finally, there is an evulsion fracture of the malleolus tertius or a rupture of the posterior syndesmosis. Looking at this final x-ray, notice that the syndesmosis is disrupted. There is an evulsion fracture of the medial malleolus. There is a fibula fracture above the syndesmosis. It is visible here, but look at the second x-ray. The fracture is higher up. When looking at the AP view here, you could have misdiagnosed this as soft tissue swelling. Therefore, always remember your basic principles and apply the rule of twos. That's it basically. Remember ABC and the syndesmosis. For more information, please visit radiologyassistant.nl.